Communications Channel. We are here with the SIU Edwardsville Advanced Photography Class. Everybody say hi. 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 We just shot a bunch of interviews with artists where they all speak about their work, so you've got to make sure that you listen to all of them because they are really insightful and a lot of fun to listen to. We have their teacher here. You may want to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Abby Hefner, Area Head of Photography. And she did, a, she did a great job coaching these guys and teaching them. Did you guys learn a lot? Oh, yeah. So much. All right. So I'm going to put you all on the spot right now. I want you guys to pick out your favorite piece that's not yours and tell me why you like it. Okay. All right. Everybody get a second? Who wants to go first? I'll start. I'll start. All right. I really like Hannah's work. I really like how it turned out, I especially like um, that one. Right the mirrors? There. Yeah, yeah. The mirrors, idea. the isolation series with the mirrors. Yeah, I think it's really thought provoking. Uh, yeah, it's shot really nice. Is that like, is it composite or is those actual um, mirrors? They are mirrors, but I composited um, her in each mirror. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful work. All right. Who wants to go next? Okay. Okay. Uh, my first, I think, is also Hana work. The yes. one on the top with the blanket. With the blanket? Yeah, I think I told them before that this reminds me of Little Mermaid. Uh, what is that? Ursula. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, you're right. Um, my favorite work is Nacho's work. I love the one with the hand. The hand with the scar. And this one is the toilet. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and now we didn't talk about this in your interview, no. so you hurt yourself on the toilet. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> the, the water tank lift. I lift it up just to shake that the water doesn't work. For some reason, it's broken my hand. Oh, and that's the scar. Yeah, and that's my toilet. My friend toilet also. <laughs> Is there a particular one in the series? Um, especially this close up on this side of this uh, building right here, the soccer. Yeah. Is that the tavern? Yeah, you can just like see almost all the way down the tunnel. Hold on, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and we're back. Okay, sorry about the interruption. Had to take care of some business. Darren, now what you were saying about the tap, the tavern? Oh yeah, I really love her. Uh, I really love the conversation that Kelly displays about past and present. Um, first, because I love the like composition of having all these images in one large frame. And how it's like these snapshots that have a lot of atmosphere. I just feel like it's you have to sit with the work to really digest it. And I really enjoy that aspect of it. That's great. Okay, you want to go next? Sure. Um, I think I really like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I really like parents because I feel like it's a bit more interactive, and it just I haven't seen a lot of work that's. <laughs> like that. So. It is the first time we have had QR codes on things here at the gallery, and I, I had to learn something new. <laughs> the wonderful thing about these these pieces are you you can actually you take a picture of it with your phone, you go to your website, and you can listen to the voices of women and talk about how they sit with white privilege. It's really it's yeah. you gotta give yourself at least a half an hour because it took me half an hour to listen to everything. It's, it was really nice. So. Um, really like Burke's work. I have been just, it's been so fun to watch as she's experimented with different um, post-production editing and incorporating her painting in the work and then like using composite photography but always using herself as the subject. It's just, it's been really interesting to watch well, that's all. Great. Yeah. Oh, see, I cannot choose because I <laughs> very, very honestly am quite enamored with all of your work for very different reasons. And I'm super, super proud of all of the work that you did. And it's amazing to come in here and just like at the end of the semester see this work that's very much collaborative, that you all gave so much of yourselves to assist your peers and to think so thoughtfully about the work. I think it's all really impressive, um, and so congratulations, and I hope this is like an exciting time to celebrate. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I do have to say, like, as I was going, there was a little something about every piece that I loved, like 
Helen back. I love having, this is our first time having comic books on the store. That's great. And, and they're really, it's really skillfully done. You did a wonderful job. And after listening to your interview, I mean, I, I'm a superhero freak too. Like, yeah. I wanted to be Jamie Summers Bionic Woman when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, it's like, but I mean, it's fine. And, you know, female Spider Man, this body ain't going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But, like, <laughs> it's wonderful. I read through it. I'm looking forward to seeing the full book because it doesn't really end. Yeah, yeah. It leaves you on a cliffhanger. <laughs> Cliffhangers. And, and the Alton series is wonderful. Like, I. I didn't realize, I mean, I hung it, I looked down on my study note, but I wasn't, it didn't dawn on me at first that it was overlays of taking the past and the present and putting them together. It is, it is wonderful. Like, listening to you talk about the work while I was viewing it really gave me another dimension to it. It was, yeah. it was really nice. And the scars, like, <laughs> We all have our scars. <laughs> and this is a topic to me that's really important because I've always been about nature and showing yourself and not pretending of who you are. So like, I don't wear makeup because I don't feel like I need to put a mask on for the world. And this, the scar series goes right along with that. Like, you can show your scars, you can be vulnerable, you can put yourself out there, and there's nothing wrong with it. You're just as beautiful with or without the scars. And, of course, the sitting with our wine mess series. Goodness, like the last, I spent a good half hour listening to these <laughs> and it was insightful and poignant. And there was one of the women. I think it was Mariah. Was this one at the very end? Person, Kara or Mariah? One of them that went to a Catholic school. Mariah. And had very limited experience growing up. I really resonated with her. I, like that was kind of my shared experience with Mariah. It was it just you did a really wonderful series with that. Looking forward to seeing where you go with that in the final book. Yeah. And of course, the isolation series. Wow, like <laughs> I understand that like it, your focus was about the depression, but when I first saw it, my first immediate thought was all these kids in high school and college that had to go through yeah. the COVID pandemic. It's like, how much more poignant and expressive can you get in the isolation series? Just absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> and the, the creation of Adam and seeing her in her image, you know, you know. <laughs> I love that. Like, I'm definitely an alternative religion theories, and like, I like to get outside of the box when it comes to religion. And you did a wonderful job at pointing out those differences and seeing the world a little differently and not just through the normal mainstream there is one God eyes. It's like it's nice to be able to see how other people think and experience, especially religion. So and of course Darren, great job showing off the Midwest. <laughs> you know, you make some of our, you know, areas that in the in society in our little area that aren't always the best looking look great good job <laughs> you know i love the geese like how can you not love the geese and you know i can't think of is that the lock bridge is that what that is um the chain of rocks is the chain of rocks it's like it's just great good job i mean nice overall presentation you guys should be very very proud of what you did here this exhibition overlooked was designed and curated and organized by the advanced photography class at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. The students work together to show uh, semester-long projects, talk about their work, come up with a theme, a title for the exhibition, uh, put together promotional material, prepare artist talks and artist statements, put together a great little booklet about the work. They also wrote bios. Um, and prepared the work, framed, matted, uh, and brought it all in. And our one of our students, uh, graduate student Erin McMullen, wrote um, the little exhibition statement that goes along with the work, so I'm gonna go ahead and read that. How can photography help us see? What do we overlook within ourselves as we move through the world? How can a photograph help us look further, deeper, within ourselves and around us? 
a lens between our eyes and the world around us can open up our eyes to something we may not otherwise see. In this exhibition featuring work from the advanced photography students at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, each artist uses their camera as a tool to illuminate aspects of our lives, um, those which are often overlooked. The body becomes landscape, a map of past experiences, the story of creation is re-examined and reimagined. We meet people who are quietly engaged in unpacking their white privilege. The visual landscape of the present begins to tell us stories of the past. We see what it feels like to exist in isolation. Fantasy shows us new truths about reality. Th this exhibit breaks down blinders and asks us to slow down and break up the ever-quickening pace of our lives to look closer at what all too often is overlooked. Hi, I'm Hannah Urquhart. I'm a senior at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. I'm studying studio art and I'm focusing in photography and textiles. My work isolation is a series of eight tableau photographs about depression. Six of these photographs are being shown at the gallery. For this series, I thought a lot about how I see depression, and in dealing with my depression, I often shut down and tend to push people away. I essentially isolate myself from people. There have been days where I haven't left my bed because of how bad my depression has been. So when thinking back on these really bad days, I kept thinking about the objects or household items that surrounded me. I knew I wanted to do something with these items. Because for me in these moments, these items feel like huge barriers keeping me from life. And of course, this is just not true. These items are just things, and I'm the only one keeping myself from life. But that is just how I have felt in these moments. So I've decided to photograph these objects with different individuals in remote outdoor locations. I shot them outdoors because I wanted to convey extreme isolation and give insight to how depression can look for some people. For further inspiration for this project, I interviewed a few people on how they experienced depression. Doing this was really helpful in hearing different things that people are dealing with that I may not have experienced the same way, and then portraying those experiences in the series. I think this is a series that anyone can relate to, whether you deal with depression or not. We all can relate to feeling lonely or isolated, at least some point in our lives. I also think it was an interesting time to make a series that deals with the topic of isolation, since the majority of the world has had to practice isolating for the past two years. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused many people to experience depression due to isolation from friends and family members. And although I didn't make this series about my experience during the pandemic, I did keep in mind while making the series that isolation can cause depression just as depression can cause isolation. Depression looks different for everyone, and that's why it's important to talk about. So that is what I have been aiming to do in my art, to be more vulnerable and honest, even though it can be terrifying. But making this work has also been therapeutic and fulfilling. I want people to see it and be intrigued by it. But more importantly, I want the series to portray experiences that people can relate to and find solace in knowing others are going through similar things. Hi, my name is Brooke Crankle, and I'm a first year MFA candidate in photography at Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. Um, in my works, I explore social justice issues, mental health, environmental concerns, extraterrestrial life, spirituality, and ecofeminism related to traditions and belief systems that exist within our culture. Ecofeminism interprets the environment through a female perspective that nurtures the environment, which contrasts the current day environment that is capitalist and destructive to nature. I investigate the lengths in my research through experimentation of different mediums, such as photography, drawing, painting, and sculpture, which aid in the narrative renderings that conceptually deal with the toxic beliefs and problems within European American society. Conceptually, I am focused on the mistranslation of meaning and intention from one language to another, and how the story of he who is God could be reframed as she who is God, or Jesus Christ as a woman instead of a man. In my research, I found an apparent erasure of the Heavenly Mother in the New Testament translation from the Old Testament Hebrew language. Instead of the Heavenly Father, Heavenly Son, and Holy Ghost, I reframe the Trinity as the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Mother, and the Holy Child. 
The current mainstream religious beliefs in America contribute to the patriarchy, which in turn hinders human experience, connectivity, and spirituality. This work is important because these problems of religious beliefs are problematic in creating more inequalities for women. Um, these images specifically are inspired from my questionings of liturgic art depictions of Jesus as a white male. As a child, I wondered about if there was a black Jesus or a Jesus as a woman, or if Mary was also a god but depicted as a mere mortal. I, as well as many of us, have probably played the game of telephone in which a group passes a whispered secret to the person next to them as a childhood lesson that teachers give to tell students how much a story can change when passed along. In my research of traditions of storytelling and the translation of the Old Testament, I found that the word for God in the Old Testament is Elohim, which is non-gendered and refers to more than one God. This makes me wonder more about the answers in which we seek to understand such large concepts of spirituality and existence and that are hindered by our own human experience and perceptions. For example, in symbolisms of my work, I play with titling and iconic imagery. In the image, the creation of Adam, there is a single atom in an ethereal being's grasp, but as well as a fetus merged with the imagery of what Earth's surface looked like 250 million years ago, known as the continent of Pangaea. My image, so God created us in her image, contains imagery exploring the stoned ape theory and how that could relate to Christian and pagan traditions of Christmas. I hope that through my series of images and performances of stage self-portraits, questioning narratives surrounding the history of human nature, that the work will challenge the ideas that many people hold to be true, yet no human is able to perceive such systems of belief with the current capacity of the human brain. These large prints are part of a larger body of work titled Wayward in My Womanhood, which further investigates toxic femininity, female health and wellness, and gender constructs. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kelly Gaines, and I have a bachelor's in construction management and an MBA. I am continuing my education to further develop my skills in art, so I'm taking a few art studio classes and completing this photography course. So the focus of my work has primarily been of animals, nature, history, and, and architecture. I had been around animals most of my life and have traveled to many of the states, often going into many national parks. The history that I am mostly interested in is from the last about 100 years because it is close enough to my lifetime that I can understand and relate to the most. I can see how many things in the last century directly shape how society is today, whether it is inventions, societal changes, nature, or buildings. Additionally, many people in this era have listened to stories from family and friends or are the ones who, are, who lived through it. I also find that it, it is important to know the past as it can show why society is the way it is today. The draw to history is shown in my series titled History of Alton. I, said, I decided to do this project because Alton is a city local to me with a rich history. The series is a work in progress in which I have 10 images so far, six of which are seen in this exhibition. This series compares present day images of the city of Alton with historical images of the city. To show this comparison, I merged the two photographs together within Photoshop with the old photo transparently laid upon the new photo. Because Alton is, well, is also well known for many of the haunted locations, I found it important to include the old photographs time period elements like people, wardrobes, and vehicles, and the process of having the old photo transparent to help give that ghostly haunted feeling. I was inspired to do this project because of a previous photography professor I had who talked about a couple projects like this. He told me that surveyors would not only gather information for creating maps, they would sometimes take photographs of the locations they are at. This led to a few photographers finding these locations years after the original photograph was taken and then retaking the photograph years later to show the differences. Some of these projects include Timothy O'Sullivan uh, helping work with the Wheeler Survey Project, 
and the USGS creating a project titled USGS Repeat Photography Project. This had sparked my interest as I had taken a couple survey courses when I was going for my construction degree, but did not know they would sometimes take photographs. Since I was also, also interested in history, I found it an interesting idea to pursue. For this project, I found that Alton has a long history that goes way back to even before the Civil War. While this was from more than 100 years ago, history overall is interesting to me, and, so these events, I, and through these events, I can see how the war greatly influenced the area. The image titled Love, Lovejoy Bench was taken at the Elijah Lovejoy Monument, which is dedicated to Elijah Lovejoy. He was well known for his views on anti-slavery, which led to his murder by a pro-slavery mob. The prison for Confederate POWs was located in Alton, which led to both a military cemetery and monument dedicated to the Civil War, which is seen in the image civil, entitled Civil War Monument. In addition to the Civil War, Alton is like many other cities where buildings can come and go or or still be standing today. Some locations have had many different buildings, like the Image Tavern, which is now the Oasis Women's Shelter. Some locations have the same buildings stand tall for many years, but aren't, aren't used anymore, as seen in the images of Grand Theater in Stratford. Finally, some buildings are still being used today for their original purpose, as seen in College Life, from the Lewis and Clark Community College campus. When viewing this work, I expect the audience to wonder more about Alton and its history. I also hope that it encourages viewers to look past the current building's purpose and to be curious about its past, whether in their hometown or in their travels. It's important for history to not be overlooked. As the US historian Henry Glassy states, History is not the past, but a map of the past, drawn from a particular point of view to be useful to the modern traveler. Hi, my name is Dan Ben. I'm currently from St. Charles, Missouri, but I grew up in University City, Missouri. I currently attend SIUV, Southern Illinois University, and I'm pursuing a BA and a minor in studio art. Throughout my childhood, I've always been fond of photography at the age of 14. I found myself very interested in my mother's Nikon camera a lot, messing me around, just trying to find different photos to take, take pictures of. Uh, most of the time, it would be random still lives or various other objects throughout the house that caught my eye. Later, my parents both noticed my interest and purchased me my very own DSLR camera, and I haven't stopped taking photos since. Fast forward, I found myself exploring ways to display feelings and emotions through images. Works like this explore how nature affects the psyche and moments that tend to go overlooked. These images serve as analogies for locations and events that can be seen as a sense of stability and tranquility. <clears throat> this project required me to dig deep and reflect on some personal circulating issues that I found myself running into constantly. The theme of Zen and meditation helped me channel a different take on negative and positive situations that I felt like I couldn't bear mentally in my home environment. I found that nature within itself is an outlet through observation and through consideration to help decompress and relieve feelings of anxiety and self-doubt. Midwest Paradise is an archival pigment print that is a 40 by 40 inch grid style that displays various locations I found myself running to for clarity and hope. Hi, my name is Natcha Wong Shanlo. I am originally from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, I am a virtual, visual artist focusing on photography. Currently, I pursue my master degree in fine art at Southern Illinois University at Wartville in Art Studio, uh, focusing on photography and digital media. I bring a professional background in portraiture to my current work as a visual artist. That experience has also included business management and recruitment, giving me a unique skill set that I have honed with advanced photography coursework at Michigan State University and the Nikon School in my native Thailand. And more recently with my master in digital photography degree from New York's prestigious School of Visual Arts. Currently, I am pursuing my MFA in art studio 
with a focus on photography and digital media at Southern Illinois University at Westville. I utilize my camera to explore the theme of home culture, community, identity, and the relationship between people and places. To examine my deformation of personal methodology, I often incorporate myself and my experience as a love friend. My works has been included in national and international exhibitions, include the Flat Project 2021 at Rockefeller Center in New York City, an ongoing public art show at the Presidio in San Francisco, and the upcoming Lens Culture in New York 2022 in May. In this large format photographic series, Scars, I use my body to communicate the idea of embracing oneself by examining imperfection and vulnerabilities in order to perceive them as life lesson and evidence of survival. Utilize skill in lighting and studio photography, I provide, a clinical, uh, I provide a clinical touch to my images. I use a medium format camera to capture remarkable details of my scar. Taking a closer look at the texture of my skin and the scars on various parts of my body in order to present the viewers with alternative perspective is also an experiment to communicate the message of self-love and worthiness. I remember people staring at my knee with wide open eyes, and some even had their jaw open. They were staring at the weird huge scar on my right knee, which hilariously someone thought was a tattoo. I got this scar when I was in college. I spent two weeks with my huge burning knee and swollen leg in the hospital and missed my midterm exam. It was a jellyfish that gave me this painful mark, which had affected my dream of becoming a flight attendant. I have seen many people who were suffering and self feel self-conscious about their scars and wanted to conceal them by wearing clothing that would cover them up. Although my jellyfish scar does not cause me to feel ashamed in the same way others do, I understand them. The scar affects my self-confidence on certain occasions such as a flight attendant job interview. Visible scar affect me, but so do the invisible scar left over from traumatic emotional experiences. This whole series consists of 16 scars with 21 images. There is also a handmade book that I make it with my own hand. At the Framations Arts Gallery, I have my 44 by 44 inches large format print exhibiting here. Lastly, scars do not determine our values, rather they reflect our life experience. Instead of concealing and shaming our scars, I would like to encourage people to embrace their scars and see them as another type of memories and life experiences that mold us into the person we are today. Be kind to ourselves and learn to live with them. Hello. My name is Terrence Wellmaker, and I'm a fourth year BA art student with a minor in creative writing at Southern Illinois University, and I'll be graduating next year with those focuses. So I am first and foremost a storyteller who uses any visual medium that allows me to translate stories I've written in whatever form they take, whether it be stop motion, hand-drawn animation, live action, still photography, or in this case, a comic book. So this is my original story, Hell and Back, that I wrote a rough outline for, and then I decided that I wanted to transform this into a comic book. The story in itself was not something I was all too concerned about when I first started working on this project, but when I saw, first sought out to do it, I told myself immediately that I just wanted to make a comic book. And so I did. I had no idea how the comic would manifest or what the story would be, but I couldn't waste any time. Having a lifelong knowledge of comic books and how they're formatted and how stories are told within the confines of the aesthetic, the look of it was very much settled on, but I had no idea how to do it and have it look good. I'm not too good of a drawer and not at all good at painting. So I started researching techniques to appease that comic look, at first working with heavy contrast and high saturations, something you see a lot in graphic novels, but it wasn't satisfying that vision in my head, that iconic look I see when I read comic books. I began researching digital painting, painting over still photographs to make the subjects and the composition seem animated, and it was here that I found my method and began the work proper on Hell and Back. 
so I look at this work in its current state as a statement to growing older and us losing that nostalgic part of ourselves when we were children due to the responsibilities of adulthood, especially with us coming out of or back into a pandemic. You know, there's so much misinformation going around, but I feel like now more than ever, people are more confined to their homes and thus more open to spending time with themselves and hopefully revisiting the things that they love the most perhaps when they were kids or something that they just didn't have time for anymore. And I think this work really resonates in that way. And I drew a lot of comic books as a child. I buried myself into video games, cartoons, movies, and TV shows out of a sheer love for that world of entertainment and imagination. And I literally used to have dreams about being a superhero. You know, I once dressed up as a knockoff Superman when I was like five or six. I was wearing like whitey tighties and a tile cape. I had the whole nine. Uh, I actually looked more like Captain Underpants now that I think about it. But I was climbing this dresser in my room that I shared with my brothers, pretending I was scaling like a skyscraper or something. It was pretty awesome. But I tipped the whole thing over onto my siblings. And they were just playing video games. They had no idea it was coming. <laughs> and my sister was in there, too. She got the worst of it. It was pretty bad when it happened, but in hindsight, it's pretty funny. She got stuck between the bars. Sorry, sis. All right. So that was a time for me. It was an age of freedom and expression that I've always had this insatiable thirst for. As I've grown older, I can proudly say that I've not only retained it, but that it's been engraved into my soul. That world serves as my escape haven from life. As I'm improving and learning more about my craft and who I am as a storyteller, I'm never forgetting what inspired and still inspires me. The idea to actually participate in those things that I grew up loving is possible. So with this work, the images were actual images of myself that I edited in Photoshop. To further that connection with my love for this world, I actually transformed myself into the character at the end of the story. I temporarily dyed my hair white and I wore contacts that are similar to the character's eyes. I made a makeshift suit that was seen as the costume for the story. For the show itself, I've made 15 promotional posters that anyone can take until supplies last. We have 15, we have quite a few. Uh, and I wanted to do that as another ode to my love for that nostalgic world that I still get so every so often when I go and see a new movie and they hand out the little posters for you to take home after the film ends so that even when you get home, you still have that piece of that experience with you. You still have a piece of that magic. And I want people, all 15 of them, to carry that with them as a symbolic connection to my experience. And I see those extra leaps in the process as the grandest statement behind this work and where the true appreciation of the art comes into play. Fully immersing myself into the world of imagination, then making myself a part of it, was the ultimate proclamation of my love for that realm and never leaving it behind. So it was very fulfilling for me and validating to me as an artist. And I hope and I pray that it inspires others to view my work and are perhaps afraid of expressing themselves in whatever way that they choose to, to not be. I hope my work inspires them to never forget who they are and to be true to themselves. But this is definitely a work in progress. In the future, I plan to lengthen this story to be more thought out and to tell a more complete version of this tale I conjured up based on my conceptual brain space at the time of its imagining. With this method of storytelling, however, I've discovered another avenue of adaptation that will allow me to translate screenplays I've written, stories, or even just ideas into this comic book format to get those artistic itches out of my system, but also as a way of showing the type of storyteller that I am. The hope is that my ideas are adapted into feature-length films, something of which I pray I'm writing or directing one day in my life so that they can entertain people all over the world and create an escape haven for them. Hi, my name is Terrence Wellmaker, the writer and creator of my comic book, Helen Back, and today I'm going to be reading it to you guys. So let's go ahead and get this started. So this is Helen Back, a short story created by Terrence Wellmaker. In the beginning, there's a couple about the artists, which you can read. You come to the gallery. We're going to start with Abandon All Hope Ye Who Enter Here, which is a quote by Dante Alighieri. Okay, and now let's start it. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Wham! <sighs> this is bullshit. Who the hell works on Christmas anyway? The little one's out like the light. At least someone's having a silent night. Putting on the clothes. Zip, zip, zip. Time to go to work. And that's act one. Oh, come on, red light. Literally the only one here. Huh? Must have just been the what the fuck? It's the apocalypse. At first, there was nothing. Pitch black, 
darkness. But then there was this beautiful light, like nothing I had ever seen. Last thing I remember, I was falling. I was at peace for a second. I don't remember saying you fell into heaven. Act two begins. Holy shit! No pun intended. And so it began. But this wasn't torture, judgment. This was conditioning. Preparing us two billion years later, hell time for our resurrection. Three minutes later, our time. Whoosh! Am I burning? Rah! I've got work to do. To be continued. So that was really fun reading this comic to you guys. I'm really excited to show you guys the rest of the story that I'm working on. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. See ya. Hi, my name is Erin McMullen, and I'm a multimedia artist um, with a focus in textiles based in St. Louis, Missouri. I am currently pursuing my MFA at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. Um, I'm using the MFA program to explore how to incorporate my activism into my art. That's, that's really why I'm an artist. Um, and so I'm looking at how to use my artwork to talk about contentious issues like race, white privilege, um, and social inequities, especially how they pertain to my work with cotton farmers in India, as well as my own identity as a white cisgendered woman living in the US. Um, as you may imagine, a lot of the work can be very difficult material to um, sit with. And so this particular project, Sitting With Our Whiteness, was my um, attempt to explore how to make work that doesn't skirt around the issues, but that is a little bit more hopeful, um, that can engage the viewer in a way that doesn't immediately raise their defenses, but rather invites them to um, do some self-reflection, think about how the content of the work relates to their own lives and their own identity. So with this project, um, I see it, this is the first phase of the project. I see it as a much longer term ongoing project um, that hopefully will eventually culminate in a book. Um, but I went and interviewed five women and took their photographs, their portraits as well. And we just talked about um, what their experience is in continuing to intentionally engage in some kind of anti-racist practice as a white woman. Um, and the idea for this project was really to balance out other artwork that I'm making where I'm exploring historically how white women have been complicit in or even active in upholding white supremacy. So um, it's my hope that these participants who, are, who were so vulnerable and brave in, um, you know, in making this choice to participate in this public project um, that they will kind of uh, show you a window into what an anti-racism practice can look like. That it doesn't have to be some big, like, I'm giving up everything in my life to become an anti-racist good white person. And that there are ways that um, each of us can take a moment, do some self-reflection, apply some self-compassion, and, and think about like how we can engage in a more um, just and holistic way in our communities.